Francis. She's head of breast medical oncology at the Peter McCallum Cancer Center in Melbourne, Australia. Prudence. Thank you, Carlos, and thank you for your interest in our research. Um, we've got no conflicts of interest um, to disclose for this research. And I would like to point out for those of you who are interested in some more information about our study after the meeting that I'm pleased to say that I have my US study co-chair, Ginny Fleming, in the audience. And I also have uh, Meredith Regan, who did the trial analysis here. So the soft trial was the suppression of ovarian function trial. And this trial was a phase three randomized trial comparing adjuvant hormonal therapy with tamoxifen plus ovarian function suppression versus tamoxifen alone in premenopausal women with hormone receptor positive early breast cancer. This was conducted by collaboration of groups. It was led by the International Breast Cancer Study Group and with the collaboration of cooperative groups from around the world from the Breast International Group and the North American Breast Cancer Group and it was federally funded in the US by the National Cancer Institute. The soft trial looked at different hormonal therapies for premenopausal women with early breast cancer, and we concluded that when ovarian suppression was added to either tamoxifen or an aromatase inhibitor, exemestane, that there was reduced recurrence of breast cancer in higher risk young women who did not reach menopause after receiving prior chemotherapy. The soft trial also showed that ovarian suppression did not benefit all young women. The background to our study, tamoxifen's been the standard adjuvant hormonal therapy after surgery for premenopausal women with hormone receptor positive breast cancer for many years now. For a long time, it's been uncertain as to whether adding ovarian function suppression for premenopausal women who receive adjuvant tamoxifen will provide any additional advantage. Premenopausal women who receive adjuvant chemotherapy can have their ovaries stop functioning, and the ovaries normally produce estrogen, and when they stop functioning, the women enter menopause with cessation of the estrogen production. And we know from previous trials that premenopausal women who go into menopause after chemotherapy have a lower risk of their breast cancer recurring. The other bit of data that's been noted previously by the IBCSG in their research in their chemotherapy trials were the women who were under 35 who were diagnosed with hormone sensitive breast cancers were found to have a higher risk of relapse compared to the other premenopausal women and it was thought that this might be partly due to the fact that their ovaries were continuing to function and continuing to produce estrogen. The other background to this trial was that we know in the last decade or two that aromatase inhibitors have been shown to be more effective than tamoxifen as adjuvant hormonal therapy for postmenopausal women. But aromatase inhibitors do not work effectively in women who have active ovaries and in women who are premenopausal because there's too much estrogen coming from the ovaries. So when we set out to design the soft trial, we were trying to address two questions. The primary question was what is the value of adding ovarian function suppression to treatment with adjuvant tamoxifen in premenopausal women with hormone sensitive breast cancer? The secondary question is what is the role of treatment with an aromatase inhibitor exemestane combined with ovarian function suppression in premenopausal women? So the soft trial randomized more than 3,000 women to three different treatments and the three treatments are shown on the right. The first treatment was tamoxifen for five years. The second treatment was tamoxifen plus ovarian function suppression also for five years. And the third treatment was an aromatase inhibitor exemestane combined with ovarian suppression for five years. Women who were assigned to receive ovarian suppression could choose from either a monthly injection of triptorolin or if they preferred a permanent method of ovarian suppression by surgical removal of their ovaries or irradiation of both ovaries. When we enrolled women in the soft trial, there were actually two different cohorts of women who were able to participate in the trial. The first cohort were a group of women who had not received chemotherapy. 
Now the use of prior chemotherapy before women went into the soft trial was optional in the soft trial and it was decided between the woman and their doctor on the basis of the features of their cancer, and their age and other factors. The group did, that did not receive chemotherapy on average had lower risk breast cancers, they were on average older and this was the reason that they probably, it, the decision was made for them not to receive chemotherapy. And those women entered the study within 12 weeks of having undergone their surgery and tamoxifen was their only post-operative systemic or drug therapy. The second group of patients who had received prior chemotherapy were quite different. These women on average were younger and they had higher risk tumours. Their tumours tended to be larger, they were more likely to be lymph node positive, they had more aggressive features under the microscope. And the other difference with the group that could enter after prior chemotherapy was that these women were allowed to enter the study up to eight months after they completed their chemotherapy. And in that eight month period, the patient and their doctor were trying to see whether their ovaries were still functioning and still producing estrogen. Now in that time they could start tamoxifen, which was the standard of care, and then to decide if they could go in the study or not, they needed to have a blood test at their local hospital or centre to see if they still had enough oestrogen in their blood level that showed that their ovaries were still functioning. The primary analysis for SOFT compared the first two arms, so it was the comparison of tamoxifen alone versus tamoxifen plus ovarian suppression. Now the primary analysis looks at all the women combined together, so the women who did not receive chemotherapy and the women who did receive chemotherapy. And with a median follow-up of 5.6 years, we saw that adding ovarian suppression to tamoxifen resulted in a small, but not a significant, improvement in disease-free survival. And the p-value was not significant, it was 0.10. So overall in the trial, there was not a benefit from ovarian suppression added to tamoxifen. However, there were important differences between the two distinct patient groups that I told you that were entered in the trial. So you'll recall that the group who received prior chemotherapy on average were younger, and the reason they were younger is that women who are closer to the natural age of menopause are more likely to go into menopause with chemo. So the group that still were producing estrogen tended to be younger with a median age of 40 years. And it's in this group that we actually do see that we've achieved improved outcomes from the addition of ovarian function suppression to tamoxifen. And we saw a 22% reduction in the relative risk of recurrence of breast cancer with tamoxifen plus ovarian suppression compared with tamoxifen alone. We saw further improvement in the disease-free survival with exomestane plus ovarian suppression compared to tamoxifen alone, with a 35% reduction in the relative risk of recurrence of breast cancer. Basically, the best treatment in this group who'd had prior chemotherapy and was still premenopausal was the exomestane plus ovarian suppression. And this treatment, as compared to giving the standard treatment, which is tamoxifen alone, resulted in seven or eight fewer women out of 100 experiencing further breast cancer within the next five years. We had been particularly interested in the very young women with breast cancer based on our previous research in the IBCSG suggesting that women under 35 have a particularly high risk of relapse with hormone sensitive breast cancers. In this age group, we saw the most striking effects of the advantage of adding ovarian suppression to the treatment. The women who were assigned to tamoxifen alone, who were in the black curve, experienced a much higher rate of further breast cancer within the next five years compared to the women who received either the treatment arms where they received ovarian function suppression. When we looked at what happened over the next five years, for women who received the standard of care treatment, for the under 35 age group, so if they got tamoxifen alone, one in three of those women experienced further breast cancer within five years, as compared with one in six of the women who were assigned to the newer treatment, exomestane, the aromatase inhibitor, plus ovarian suppression. Now you'll recall that there was another cohort of women enrolled in the trial, the women who did not receive chemotherapy after discussion with their doctor, on average, these women were older than the group who received chemotherapy who were 40, and this group on average were 46. 
Now, the outcomes in this group of women who did not receive chemotherapy, they were selected on the basis that their breast cancers looked to be more favourable, and these women have actually had excellent outcomes with all three treatments, and we see no advantage for adding ovarian suppression in this group. Basically, for the women who received the standard of care in this treatment arm, at five years of follow-up, more than 95% of the women have experienced no further breast cancer, and we cannot see any meaningful benefit from the addition of ovarian suppression in this group at this point in follow-up. These women were older, as I said, 46 years of age, and they were closer to the natural age of menopause, and so if you can imagine we're following them for five years, some of these women will naturally have gone into menopause during that time. So we conclude that women who received chemotherapy and did not reach menopause had reduced breast cancer recurrence with the addition of ovarian suppression to tamoxifen, and especially if they were under 35 years of age. Furthermore, if we combined ovarian suppression with an aromatase inhibitor exemestane, we got further reduction in breast cancer in this same group of women. Overall, quality of life was not reduced for women's general health, However, ovarian suppression did result in increased menopausal symptoms, which were particularly troublesome for the women in the first couple of years. For women who were allocated to receive exemestane plus ovarian suppression, they did notice effects and report effects on their sexual functioning. It's important to note from this trial that not all premenopausal women benefit from ovarian suppression, and some did not receive chemotherapy, and they do very well with tamoxifen alone. So treatment with an aromatase inhibitor exemestane plus ovarian suppression is more effective than standard tamoxifen for hormone receptor positive early breast cancer in women for whom chemotherapy is indicated and who do not reach menopause. And for women under 35 years of age with hormone receptor positive breast cancer, ovarian suppression is an important treatment. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. May I start with the first question? Uh, uh, can you put this in context of other <coughs> ovarian function suppression studies? Right, so this trial was the largest trial that's ever been conducted in premenopausal women with hormone receptor positive breast cancer. And one of the important differences between this trial and other trials, and there have been other attempts to look at the importance of ovarian suppression. The previous trials have been, the effect of ovarian suppression has really been diluted because some women went into those trials with uncertain hormone receptor status of their breast cancer, so they were a mixture of hormone receptor positive and negative. And the other thing was that women went into those trials straight after chemotherapy, and many of them were probably permanently postmenopausal from their chemotherapy, so any effect from ovarian suppression was diluted. What was different about this trial was that we managed to get agreement from all the major academic cooperative groups from around the world to collaborate on the one trial, which is relatively unique, and we needed all those groups to contribute because breast cancer in very young women is not particularly common, and to get more than 3,000 women in this age group, we needed research groups from all around the world, and we were very fortunate in the United States that the National Cancer Institute funded this research over many years, so it shows the importance of federally funded research. So, so all the women under 35, all of them resume ovarian function? Well, to go in this trial, you had to resume ovarian function. You were not allowed in the trial unless you resumed. In the women under 35, 94% got chemotherapy, but it is common in that age group for women to resume ovarian function. MarisaWeissBreastCancer.org. Uh, now that we have uh, other studies that show the benefit of extended hormonal therapy out to 10 years for tamoxifen or switching to aromatase inhibitor, how will you um, introduce that option to the, those participating in this study, and how might uh, the continued, the extended use of hormonal therapy influence your ability to sort of judge the longer follow-up of the soft study? So it's crucial that we do get longer follow-up in the soft study because we don't actually have mature survival data. We've followed the women for just over five and a half years. I think for very young women, you can see in that under 35 group that already a third of them have had a further breast cancer problem in five years. So to my way of thinking, the data from, for example, ATLAS, where they looked at extended hormonal therapy with tamoxifen for 10 years, you see much of the benefit coming in even later after 10 years. 
And I think for young women, if they're already having significant number of breast cancer events within the first five years, I think that for that under 35 or these young women, I think it's too long to wait to say that the extended hormonal therapy might benefit them because they may have already had a distant relapse by that time. So for those youngest women, I think that that's not to say that you mightn't give them you know, extended therapy. In this trial, we only gave five years of therapy. Maybe some of them will choose to go on longer with some type of therapy. But for that youngest group, I think they're having the events early, whereas the protection from longer tamoxifen, it often comes later, as Jack showed in his uh, prevention study, that the, event, you know, the protection occurs many years often after you finish tamoxifen. And we need it earlier for these young women. Uh, two quick questions. Have you uh, calculated numbers needed to treat? And for the panel at large, do you see this as a uh, persuasive practice changing trial? Look, I believe it is a practice changing trial. It doesn't answer every question that we have in premenopausal women. But for me, if I go back to my practice on Monday, and I see a woman under 35 with a hormone sensitive breast cancer, I will now know what to advise that woman. I will also, when I see the woman who's 48, who's got a small screen detected, you know, non-aggressive breast cancer, I will feel more comfortable that she can do very well with tamoxifen alone. So I think there are certainly groups for which this will be practice changing. Um, number needed to treat would be quite small for the women under 35 because you can see, you know, that one in three difference compared to the one in six. So for those very young women, the number to treat will be small. As women get older, the number to treat, you know, they had the most striking advantage. As the women get older within the premenopausal age group, the number to treat will be larger, but there is still an advantage. And it's really the incremental advantage. So adding ovarian suppression to tamoxifen gave a certain amount of advantage, and then switching the tamoxifen to the exomestane, the aromatase inhibitor, and ke keeping the ovarian suppression there gave a, a little bit more <coughs> advantage. Alice Goodman with the ASCO Post. Uh, in your conclusions, you say uh, exomestane plus ovarian suppression affects sexual functioning. Mm -hmm. You didn't measure that, and that's pretty important for well, young women. What about in all the other arms? How did you measure it, and what happened? So we, think we thought that actually these things were crucial when we s planned the study, and in fact, we did measure that. I'm not presenting that data, and one of my colleagues Karen Ribby will be presenting the quality of life in the main oral sessions later this morning, so there'll be a specific session on patient reported outcomes. But we serially um, asked the women, they completed questionnaires, which included measures of sexual function, and they did report things like uh, reduced libido and vaginal dryness, which were more common with the aromatase inhibitor exomestane combined with ovarian suppression compared with tamoxifen alone. So we actually have very detailed information on this um, from the women and we have it from many, you know, more than a thousand women we have this data. So we have very clear data and we set out at the start because we felt this was crucial in a very young population of women. Carlos, we're ready for the next speaker then. I have one question. I oh, sure. Question. Yeah. So, um, the, um, I wonder if you, I mean, there, there are many patients who are right now uh, committed or have started 10 years of tamoxifen. Mm -hmm. Some may be one year into it, two years into it. Uh, mo many of them are dreading being on the whole, on this drug for a decade. Uh, some not. Uh, but would it be reasonable encumbered by your data to considering those women adding ovarian suppression now and considering shortening the treat to 10 years? Is that something that would be crazy or reasonable based on the data you're showing? Well, I guess the women that were included in our trial were only the ones who were premenopausal after chemotherapy, and I guess it might depend on the age group of the woman. And young what, women, young women. Yeah, I think if the women are very young um, and they're on tamoxifen alone, if they're very young in that under 35 age group, I think that's a discussion that needs to be had with them, whether they would want to consider ovarian suppression and exomestane or an aromatase inhibitor as an alternative because if they're very young, it's very likely they are still producing estrogen. Okay. 